beautiful autumn Sunday in the Mile High City, Denver, Colorado. And America's Game of the Week as the Washington Redskins coming to take on the 6-1 and one Broncos. Of course, Mike Shanahan, 21 years of his prolific career in various roles with the Broncos, including 14 years as their head coach. Seven times took them to the playoffs, Troy, and they won a pair of Super Bowls. And a short while ago, a very, very nice video up on the Jumbotron and some watery eyes for Coach Shanahan. Yeah, you can tell, Tom, that was a very emotional moment for him. This is a place that he's got a lot of great memories, as you said. Spent a lot of time here. Still has a lot of friends in the area. Redskins won the toss. Elected to receive. And that one blasted out of the end zone. So we get a look at Robert Griffin III. Had his best game of the season one week ago, and that thriller, a 45-41 win against Chicago, threw for nearly 300 yards, including a couple of touchdowns. And don't look now, he's starting to run the football again, a season-high 84 yards. Last two weeks, he has run the ball very well, something we didn't see through the first four weeks of the season. More importantly, last week, he threw the ball much better than he has this year. Great protection, and Griffin wisely slides up to close to the 25. They'll spot it at the 24. Of course, the Redskins love running the ball, not only Griffin, but primarily Alfred Morris. Well, Alfred Morris has been a you know an excellent player for this offense, bursted onto the scene last year, and then this year he's continued to run the ball very effectively. Don't forget Roy Hallou, who last week had three touchdowns, but he's been utilized more the last three weeks to help give Alfred Morris some rest. Great coverage on the far side by the one-time pro bowler while with Arizona, Dominique Rogers, pro Marty. It brings up third down and six. The Denver defense ranks 30th in the NFL, although now they have Von Miller back and Wesley Woodyard. Well, Von Miller should help that pass defense. They come into this game last in the NFL. The Redskins trying to take advantage of that. They come out the first two plays of this game trying to throw the ball. Haven't gotten much out of it. Malou is checked into the backfield for the first time on his third down and six. And Griffin wants a timeout. Well, a lot of the talk, Troy, of course, has been about the return of Mike Shanahan. But I would imagine for a coach, he uh, may have had a few sleepless nights this week trying to figure out a way what has been the highest scoring offense in the entire NFL, East Denver Broncos. Their first loss of the season, the lowest number of points they've scored in a game, and that was 33. Yeah, well, now a lot of people th are saying, well, now you've got the blueprint on how you handle the Denver Broncos. Well, there's no question the Colts played very well. The Broncos, uncharacteristically, though, didn't execute their passing game the way we've seen from them this year. And, of course, they turned the ball over three times. Griffin rolling, rolling. Now he'll run it and well short of the first half. They gave him plenty of time to throw, but he could not find an open receiver. And it's three and out. They do a good job in the secondary of covering everybody up, and they did throughout this possession. On first down, Robert Griffin had time to get the ball down the field, couldn't find anybody. On third down, he does. He has to scramble again. They converge. That's an excellent job to start this game for the Broncos' defense. Special teams could be a big factor here today. The Redskins have had a terrible time. And Trendon Holiday will not get a chance to return it. We might see that the entire afternoon. Let's check in with Joe Klatt back in Los Angeles. It's game break time. Thanks, Tom. And to Detroit, you all saw Matthew Stafford leap into the end zone. They reviewed it and confirmed it. Stafford in the end zone, 31-30. The Lions came back, defeat the Cowboys. Back to Denver, Tom and Troy.
Unbelievable win for Detroit. Lions turned it over five times in the game. Five turnovers and still come back and win that game. And that means a lot for these Redskins here. Of course, the Cowboys beat them a couple weeks ago, but they're right in the middle of that e NFC East race. Peyton Manning, 25 touchdowns against his three interceptions. Comes out throwing. And a first down catch is up to the 36-yard line, and that's no shot. Moreno. Beautiful afternoon. Nice to have you with us for America's Game of the Week. The Hall of Famer Troy Aikman and Pam Oliver on Tom Brenneman just underway. The Redskins went three and out. And now the Broncos with a football. And good power, strong running by Moreno. That'll be a gain of eight on first down. Of course, Peyton Manning, 37 years old now, having the best start to a season of what will be a Hall of Fame career. 25 touchdowns against just three interceptions. Demarius Thomas good enough for the first down to the 49. Let's check in downstairs with Pam Oliver. Well, Tom, we will be keeping a close watch on how Peyton Manning's right ankle holds up today. Manning injured the ankle during the Broncos' loss to the Colts last week, saying it got rolled on. Manning told us the ankle is very sore, and he wasn't sure if that soreness would subside or continue into the game. Pam, thank you very much. That obviously is story number one here in Denver after Monte Ball carries for a little more than a yard on first hand. Uh, Jay Glazer reported in the, in the pregame that it was both angles watching him out here today. It looks like he's moving very gently. That's Monte Ball, the rookie out of Wisconsin, who's had some issues fumbling the football, although infrequently carrying the football. Ronnie Hillman, who had that big fourth quarter fumble in the final minutes in Indianapolis last week, inactive today. Yeah, they sent a message to him. Offensive coordinator Adam Gase told the team on Monday that if you can't hang on to the ball, you're not going to play. And Ronnie Hillman didn't even get to suit out for this game. Third down. Manning delivers to Julius Thomas. And that's a first down to the Redskins, 22. Well, man coverage, and Julius Thomas comes across on the dragging route as you see Peyton and whether or not the ankles are a factor in this game. He delivers a strike then to Thomas, who's, who's dragging across the middle to pick up a third down. Last week, the Broncos very poor on third down against the Colts. Moreno off to the left side to the 20-yard line. So many weapons for Peyton Manning, although they've taken their licks up front, but a lot of guys to deliver the ball to. He's got a lot of weapons. You, you look at it, two of those guys last year for the Broncos had over 1,000 yards receiving. Wes Welker did for the New England Patriots. This year, all three of those guys again likely to go for over 1,000 yards receiving, and maybe even Julius Thomas. Moreno inside the 10, run out of bounds at... The seven-yard line, it's first and goal, Denver. You know, Denver likes this play where they put Sean Marino in the backfield, and because of the action then, along with that, it creates a problem for the linebacker as to how he's going to play the, the route. Is he going to come over the top and allow Peyton to put it on him very quickly, or if he comes underneath all that traffic, then you've got a chance for a big play. Marino, the 14-yard reception. <laughs> Adding on first down. A touchdown to Wes Walker. We talked about the Colts last week, Tom. They ran a lot of man coverage, and when you do, you got to be careful about these routes. Demarius Thomas runs a slant route, a natural picking action that allows then Wes Walker to come wide open on the flat route, and his defender. Got caught up in the wash with Demarius Thomas going to the middle of the field. Welker now leads the NFL in touchdown receptions with nine of them. He came in tied with his own teammate, Julius Thomas. Well, we should all have ankle problems. 
Manning, five out of five, 57 yards and an early touchdown. This game is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Spectacular weather weekend here in Denver, Colorado. Nine plays, 77 yards, capped off by the touchdown reception from Wes Welker. 28 points on Denver's opening drive. Just another category where the Broncos are number one offensively in the NFL. Well, they're, <laughs> they're number one in a lot of categories offensively. And, you know, people last week then said, okay, well, now you've got a blueprint on how you play the Broncos because of what the Colts did. Yeah, you know, like I said, the Colts did a lot of really great things, but when you turn the ball over and you don't, throw the ball as straight as they normally do, then you're going to have some success. But they didn't play them any differently than most teams do. The old pick and roll. Leads to a touchdown. 7 nothing Broncos. The Redskins get it when we come back. Today's game is sponsored by Bud Light, official beer sponsor of the NFL. This was just before the kickoff today, a video tribute to Mike Shanahan. We mentioned 21 years here, 14 of those as a head coach from 1995, his final season 2008. Won more games than any Broncos head coach in franchise history, including those two Super Bowls with John Elway at quarterback. First carry of the game for Alfred Morris. This was before the game. Mike Shanahan talking with President, Vice President of Football Operations, John Elway. And, and you know, right now, Shanahan looking across. Morris trying to get to the first down marker about a yard short. Say so Mike Shanahan looking across the field, and when you see this Broncos offense, it, it looks an awful lot like the Elway led offenses that ran roughshod over the NFL when Mike Shanahan was the head coach. You know, this a great play at quarterback, a lot of weapons. They're hard to slow down as the Redskins found out on that opening drive. Third in the yard, they're going to throw it. And they pick up the first down, the catch made by the rookie tight end Jordan Reed coming off. A breakout game last week. A Redskins rookie record by a tight end. Well, you see the movement then by Robert Griffin. Move the pocket with him. That's what they like to do. Not have him stationary in the pocket. But yeah, Jordan Reed has been outstanding for such a young player. They're looking for the home run ball here. And the double coverage with an eye on Aldrich Robinson. Robinson looking around for a penalty flag that is not thrown. Well, you look at the, the Redskins coming into this game, Tom. Clearly, they're a team that wants to run the football. It's what they do well. They've done it a lot better here in recent weeks because of the fact that RG3 has been running the ball. But this Denver defense is number one in the NFL in run defense. They're big up front. They're awfully stout. Hard to run the ball against them. The Redskins are trying to take advantage of the weakness. They just really have not yet been able to do that through the air. Second down and 10. And trying to break it to the outside, Halu. It'll bring up third down and seven for the Redskins. You know, we talked a little bit about Roy Hallou earlier, and, and for a guy who last year was expected to contribute a lot, just got a couple games in, played well, battled through some injuries, primarily has been a third down back, but he's been utilized more here in recent weeks. He's done a nice job for him. He's not real tall, but he's a pretty powerful Inside runner, much more than you'd think. And a good receiver out of the backfield. That's why he's in there on third down. He had 49 catches during his rookie year two seasons ago. Incomplete on third down, and once more, the Redskins are forced to punt. The Broncos are going to give a lot of different looks. They, they disguise pretty well. They're comfortable playing man. I think their secondary, Tom, is better than their ranking has shown. Part of that has been 
the fact they've given up yards is because their offense is piling up so many points that teams have to try to stay with them. A lot of pressure, though, on the Redskins offensively. Now, defensively, to try to slow down this Broncos offense. Once more angle towards the sideline, and inside the five, it is down. Beautifully done by Rocket. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Chrysler, imported from Detroit. By AT&T, rethink possible. And by KFC, the official sponsor of couch gating. KFC plus football equals couch gating. Some of the little guys just outside of downtown Denver. They don't need oxygen. Why do the big guys need it? <laughs> supposed to affect the opponent. Manning perfect on the opening drive. From the one yard line. Hand it off and that'll Give him a little bit of preview, but not a lot, up to the five-yard line on the carry by Moreno. It's an excellent job, though, by Peyton Manning. Backed up, trying to use hard count. You could hear him trying to draw the Redskins off sides. This offensive line, however, does an excellent job of staying in there. On Friday's practice when we were there, Tom, they worked these types of things, the hard counts, over and over. A very disciplined group, as they have to be, with a quarterback who changes play so much of the line. made up to the 20-yard line by Jacob Tammy, just his third catch of the season, and that is a first down. But now, now they got to worry about Jacob Tammy. So they show that a running formation, they bring Tammy in and then allow him three access off the line and an easy completion. Jacob Tammy hasn't gotten as many opportunities this year as he was afforded last year. Moreno looking for a little bit of running room, none there. You know, it's really a collective effort when you're playing against such an explosive offense. And the special teams has done their job. They've been a malign group, and rightfully so. They've not played well, but Sab Rocca doing a good job. The first punt's out of bounds, the second one pinned inside the five. Now the defense has to make a stop. Manning looking for Thomas. And great coverage for the Redskins. Of course, that safety position, positions plural. In a state of flux right now with a concussion to Reed Dowdy, the suspension to Brandon Merriweather, and a bunch of guys that have seen very little playing time, Troy, the whole year. Well, Jose Gums is an undrafted free agent who played one year at Monmouth College. He went to college as a baseball player, played one year of football, and now he's starting his first NFL game against Peyton Manning. Macari Rambo, the rookie who started the first two games of the season. He's not played since week three back in the lineup today. Manning under throws the intended receiver Andre Caldwell. So after starting the drive from their own one-yard line, they pick up a first down up to the 20, but that's where it stalls and the Redskins get it back. Hey, that's a that's a win for the Redskins defensively. And you, know, you can't afford to get down too many scores against this group. So the Redskins offensively haven't really been able to get anything going yet. Defense does their job, and now they need a little help. Britton Colquitt puts a foot on it. And Joshua Morgan to the 22-yard line. And run out of bounds at the 24. Redskins trying to find their groove on offense. Trailing 7-0. Peyton Manning clearly a little frustrated about something, the way that drive came to an end. They scored on their first drive, so now the Redskins get it for the third time. Three and out. Picked up the first down, their second drive, and had a punt again. This is Alfred Morris. 
had three pretty good runs for Alfred Morris to start this game. Let's check in downstairs with Pam Oliver. Well, Tom, the debate continues, but Robert Griffin believes he is all the way back from that knee injury. I spoke to Griffin before the game. He told me that something that may surprise people as a runner, he's faster than ever. Griffin has rushed more and more often, but just as important, he's living up to one of his top priorities, protecting himself. He told me he's doing that better than ever. Thank you, Pam. Gain of six for Morris on first down, so second and four. And they play fake it to Morris. That's a dangerous play. And did not fool Dominique Rogers Crow Marty. Now he didn't get fooled at all. He saw the action there, and he's able to come up and make a play before the Redskins are able to get anybody out there to help block and open a lane for him. It's a great job by Dominic Rogers Cromarty, who, who I think is really playing pretty well for this team. He's a long-rangey guy, a former first-round pick by the Arizona Cardinals. The Broncos are able to get him after he had spent the last few seasons with the Eagles. But I think this secondary is better than where they rank in the National Football League. I do not believe they're the worst defense pass-wise in the league. Griffin, it is he threw. Catch is made for a first down, it looks like. What an effort there by Santana Moss. Von Miller delivered a big hit on Griffin, who still had enough on the throw. Von Miller, of course, making his second start after the suspension. Played last week against the Colts. He comes in. Looks like he went to the, the head there, but more shoulder pad than helmet. But Von Miller, even last week, you know, statistically not a lot of numbers, but I, I thought that he did a nice job, especially considering that he had not been playing. They're hoping to get more out of him here in this game, and even he expects more out of him himself. All of a sudden, a timeout on the field as you get a look at this catch by Moss. Ben Burst challenge are ruling on the field, a forward progress relative to a first down. Well, you just heard it's been challenged by John Fox. The spot of the ball, Moss stretching out. Looked like the knee did not touch, but we'll let you look as we go to break. Well, John Fox 0 for 3. When challenging a call on the field, he's challenging the spot of the ball here on the catch by Santana Moss. Well, he's getting ready to be 0 for 4. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Before any body part touched the ground, the ball was beyond the line to gain. It's first and ten. Denver is charged with their first team timeout. You know, Tom, we talk about this Denver secondary, and they've given up a lot of big plays, and today they're, they're without Champ Bailey again. He missed some time early in the year. He came back and re-aggravated his foot. He's not playing today, and then Tony Carter is also inactive today, so they're short a couple of guys. They have some depth, but they're without a couple of key contributors. Alfred Morris this time off to the left side, and good running room for Morris. Man, this guy's an impressive back. Third most rushing yards by a rookie in the history of the NFL last season. 1,600-plus rushing yards for Alfred Morris. Well, he's averaging over five yards a carry this season. And when you have holes like that, that's why you put up those kinds of numbers. Great job by that offensive line. They'll give it to him again. Gain of two this time, second down upcoming for the Redskins. 3.40 to play here in the opening quarter, and Denver in front, 7-0. Alfred Morris is so effective running the football, and really, you know, you're not surprised. Mike Shanahan, when he was in Denver, I mean, everywhere he's been, they've run the ball well, regardless of who the back has been. But they found them great guy in the draft last year. What a catch by Garcon on the far sideline. About... A foot short of a first down. Goodness. That is unbelievable right there. That's Chris Carter-like right there. That's the one right there on Fox Sports 1, Troy Aikman. <laughs> yeah, that and a few other highlight channels. <laughs> and 
they cannot convert on third and less than a foot. You give it to Halu and Robert Ayers. Tom, it didn't look like Robert Griffin was even ready for the snap. He's looking at the defense. The ball snapped. They're in the pistol formation with Halu behind him. And fortunately, Halu was prepared for it. But he was able to get on the ball. You know, third and short, they have a great opportunity to keep this drive going. They get that first down. It's a good chance they're at least coming away with a field goal opportunity. Instead, Rocca's having to punt the ball. By Holiday right at the 10 yard line. So a failed chance for the Redskins to keep the drive alive. Still down a touchdown. This game of the week in Denver. Some of the highlight headliners from the early games. How about Calvin Johnson? Seven yards shy of Flipper Anderson's single game NFL receiving yards record. Des Bryant a couple of touchdowns as the Lions won it in the final seconds at home over the Cowboys. Well, Flipper Anderson, he was my receiver back in college. Yeah, that's a 300 yards receiving. That's ridiculous. First half carry by Monte Hall. 7-0, Denver in front, closing in on two minutes to play here in the opening quarter. Manning a pump fake, and coming across the middle to make the reception, and good enough for a first down. Demarius Thomas. Well, man coverage with D'Angelo Hall. He's going to be shadowing Demarius Thomas throughout this game, much like he has the opposing team's best receiver this year already. He's had to go against Des Bryant and Brandon Marshall last week. And he draws a pretty good assignment here today. Caldwell on the reception, and the ball is in loose. Were they saying Caldwell was down? Down is the call right at... The 34-yard line, another first down. You know, Peyton Manning was talking about it, knowing that D'Angelo Hall goes with the opposing team's best wide receiver. He wasn't real sure who he was going to pick, and Peyton was saying he's going to upset whoever he doesn't line up against, saying that they're not the best on the squad. First NFL carry in the first NFL game for C.J. Anderson, a rookie who made the team as an undrafted free agent. Had an excellent training camp, and he's getting the playing time today in place of Ronnie Hillman, who is not on the active roster. Well, C.J. Anderson had a good camp, opened their eyes. He got injured. They thought about putting him on IR, but kept him active. And he's being chased and caught. That's Rob Jackson. Yeah, Rob Jackson, another guy who missed some time because of a suspension. They're glad to have him back. And this defense, Jim Hazlitt, has them playing hard. You watch the film, and they fly around to the football. And last week, Josh McCown for the Bears was able to get outside the pocket and pick up some key yardage. The Redskins don't have to worry about that with Peyton Manning. They're down. Crossing pattern, the tight end, short of the first down is Julius Thomas. Boy, we enjoyed talking to Julius Thomas a couple of days ago. Talk more about him throughout the afternoon. That's the end of the opening quarter. 7-0 Broncos. Fox NFL Sunday will return after these messages and a word from your local Fox station. D'Angelo Hall, the three-time Pro Bowl cornerback of the Redskins, need a little help getting up. After being injured on the field, but was able to walk off under his own power. And they're taking a look at him on the Redskins sideline. Oakwood punts it away, and Morgan back up inside the 10. Covered initially very good, and now all of a sudden, look out. Morgan down the sideline. An extraordinary return by Joshua Morgan, who somehow evaded five would-be Denver tacklers. <laughs> he initially was going the wrong direction, Tom. He fields his punt, then he starts backwards to keep from being tackled. Looked like he might get tackled inside the five-yard line. A big physical guy, hard to get to the ground. 
and as I talked about, a special teams that has just been awful this season has really done a nice job here in this first half, both with punt coverage, worst in the foot, worst in the league coming into this game, and then setting up the Redskins offense here on the 40-yard line. Cody Coyard returned by Morgan. Slam to the deck is Alfred Morris by Terrence Knight. We check in back in Los Angeles with Kurt Menefee. We call it the Howie Terry Bowl. Steelers and Raiders, look at this, five seconds into it, this is history. Terrell Pryor, longest run by a quarterback in NFL history, longest run in Raider history, 93 yards for a score. They lead it 14-3 in the second quarter. Tom, Troy, and Penn. Well, Bradshaw never saw Stapler run like that, did he? <laughs> no, he did not. <laughs> Rushed out of pocket, Griffin backpedaling, throws across the field, and nearly intercepted. Ianacho, no, almost picked that one off. Well, Ianacho, he just misplaced this ball, and you're going to see, I mean, this is, you can't make this throw. I mean, you just threw it up, and Ianacho sees it the entire way, and, and then starts his jump, and is unable to make a play on the ball, and We've seen that a few times from, from this Broncos secondary. Third down and eight. Only a three-man rush. Griffin missed it open. Aldrich Robinson and a flag comes in. It looked like Aldrich Robinson at the top of that route got held. And the official there was right on top of it to see it. Aldrich Robinson, normally the guy who goes vertical. You see the grab there. Good call. That's on the rookie, Kayvon Webster. Yeah, they Defense like number 36. Five-yard penalty. And a first down. You know, they like Kayvon Webster, as you said. He's a young player. There's a lot for these guys to learn. Both teams relying on young players back there. And you know, he's done a lot of good things, but then he's had some some mistakes as well inconsistent as you would expect for a young guy and he gets the grab and you'd think that he'd have been playing a lot softer just because as i said aldrich robinson last year was the guy when he came in he was going down the field and they were able to take advantage of that and then the genie was out of the the bottle they knew what what his deal was and hadn't gotten a lot of opportunities did a nice job last week and that went over chicago hey had a 45 yard right, touchdown right, right, right. his first touchdown catch of the season Automatic first down after the penalty. Ready! Ready! Kalu cuts it back to the inside, crosses midfield, and the Broncos 49. Well, after a wild finish in Game 3 of the World Series last night at Bush Stadium, they will reconvene tonight, Game 4, right here on Fox, following football. It was a great game last night. I hate that it ended like that, but it was a great game to watch. And it was a right call. Yeah, it was. Griffin Rose spins away from the tackler. But then a beautiful play coming up out of the secondary made by Iannaccio. Good job there by... Robert Griffin making the first guy miss. Sean Phillips is going to get up the field, and then he is able to get inside of that. Ian Nacho is converging. No doubt this Broncos defense is, is focused on stopping the run, and they're good enough typically to be able to do that without having to bring safeties down. But this is a little different running game they're facing here today with the Redskins. Redskins going to spend a timeout. For this third down. It's a big one for the Redskins. Trying to keep this drive alive. This game on Fox is sponsored by Lowe's. Lowe's never stop improving. By Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get Direct TV. And by Papa John's, official pizza sponsor of the NFL.
Well, Gene Michael from our crew sitting down there to gobble a seven-pound burrito. Light snack over at Jack and Grill's restaurant. We said there's 12 eggs in that and five pounds of potatoes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Needless to say, he did not finish that. Well, I wasn't there. Larry down. And across the middle, the catch is made, but short of a first down. Not getting anywhere near the first down marker was Joshua Morgan. So once more, the Redskins make a little noise, this time getting into Broncos territory, but coming up two yards short. So Rocco on the punt for the fourth time. He's done an excellent job early on here today, if nothing else creating very tough field position for the Broncos and now trying to do it again. Inside the 15 for this, uh, we have a penalty flag, I beg your pardon. This might be against the Broncos, and if it is, this could be an automatic first down, depending, of course, on where and when the penalty was committed. During the kick, Holding, number 30, the receiving team. Half the distance to the goal. All right. First down. So after the ball had already been punted, holding. So now Manning and the Redskins back up. That's about as clear as it gets right there. David Bruton with the hold. Angelo Hall back out there in corner up top on Demarius Thomas. How was that catch made? D'Angelo Hall about as tight a coverage as you can get on Demarius Thomas and still caught it. No, he was all over him. He plays the inside, and Peyton Manning recognizes where D'Angelo Hall is, and he lays the ball then on the outside hip. I mean, that's a that's a perfectly thrown pass, just the only place he could put it. Demarius Thomas, I was, I was shocked, Tom, at just how big of a receiver he is. In fact, Peyton Manning has said ever since he got here, biggest collection of receivers that he's ever thrown to. On second down and two is Moreno. Good play made by Jarvis Jenkins, who's getting the start today. Another Redskin suspended early this year, the first four games. This is his third game back. converted into a first down. Well, what happens is, is he comes up and he starts trying to work the defense a little bit to see if they'll declare the safety's will as to what their intent is. They stayed deep, and then he believed that they were going to continue to stay deep even once the ball was snapped, so he checks to a running play. The Redskins did stay in coverage, and they're able to pick up then the first down. Brendan Holiday checks into the backfield for the first time. Cross the middle, that is Walker, and that's up to the 35 for a first down. Yeah, I talked about the Colts and the way that they played these Broncos receivers. They got, you know, tried to challenge them at the line of scrimmage. Wes Welker is able to get a free run off the ball, and you see in zone coverage a lot of holes there in the middle of the field for Wes Welker. To work. First carry of the year. And he is dragged down up at the 41 yard line. Brendan Holiday picked off of waivers from the Texans as the crowd looking for a horse collar face mask penalty here against a Redskin defender. It looked like Perry Riley Jr. I'm not sure how you missed that call. Decker to mid 
field and another Broncos first down. Becker coming off a career day. 150 receiving yards last week against Indianapolis. And he is becoming more frequently the favorite target of Peyton Manning. Four times in seven games he's led the team in receiving yards. See the early numbers for Manning. It's Monte Ball. Well, it's a nice luxury for the Denver Broncos. Of course, as we mentioned, Ronnie Hillman not suited out today, but to be able to use Monte Ball and no Sean Moreno, and now as we talked about, they, they've got C.J. Anderson active, but to be able to rotate those guys through is a real luxury the Broncos have. Ball once more. Bottled up this time. Of course, the real key for them has been hanging on to the football. The, the Broncos have the most fumbles in the NFL, and they've lost the most fumbles in the NFL. That's they have put the ball on the ground an awful lot through the first half of this year. They fumbled 17 times and they've lost 10 of them. Trying to lay it out there for Welker. Pretty good coverage by Josh Wilson. So now the Broncos are forced to punt. Well, it's it's a good job by the Redskins of getting off the field. But some of these throws, I mean, Wes Welker has an opportunity. And you know, Peyton Manning is so good and, and has such great accuracy that that's what happened last week. You missed some of those throws, and you're able, especially on third down, you're able to get off the field. you got to hope some of that happens. And it happens for the Redskins. They fail to connect on a guy who generally he will complete a pass to, and it forces the Broncos to punt. Quick, straight into the air, and this one will be downed right at the five-yard line. So just seven points so far for the highest-scoring team in the NFL. Jim Haslett and the Redskins coaching staff has this team ready to play so far. Redskins still in search of points for the first time today. Trailing 7-0 in this drive. Their worst starting field position. From their own five. Morris. Into the secondary and beyond. And Alfred Morris. Got a big block from his fullback, Darrell Young. And he's finally run out of bounds up to the 32. Well, it's Darrell Young right here. He was a linebacker when he got to Washington. And they liked his ability to block and thought he'd make a good fullback. He has. He's got good hands. But he's made a number of blocks even in this game. But you, you cannot watch the Redskins offensively and not be impressed with the job he's doing. 27-yard run on first down. The loss of two. You talk about all the time, Troy. You got to get blocks from your wide receivers. Yeah, Aldrick Robinson. He, he more or less absorbs that one. But both of these teams, the wide receivers on the perimeter, really do an outstanding job. The Broncos wide receivers do. The Redskins wide receivers do. You can't run the ball effectively the way that the Redskins have been able to if you don't have guys willing to block in the run game. One fake. For a first down up to the 45 yard line that is Garcon after a big hit from Wesley Woodyard on Griffin well, off of the play action and it creates a nice lane they bring the as you said they bring Woodyard they bring Trevathan and when they bring the linebackers it opens up then that intermediate zone that they completed Griffin twice wanted to throw it to Young and either lost the handle or decided better of it, and he has dropped by night for a big loss, a loss of almost nine. That's a big loss, and he, and he had a chance to just throw it away. I mean, it was outside the tackle box, and once you don't get the look that you want, he wanted to go to Darrell Young, but the corner kind of slow plays it like he's going to drive on it. 
but you just can't afford the sack there. It was too easy to get that ball out. You know, it's funny sometimes. You see all the hits on Robert Griffin the third, but a lot of the times he's dropped back, he's had a lot of time to throw the ball and has just been unable to find a receiver and inevitably has gotten hit. Quick slant here and the catch made by the tight end, Jordan Reed. And he's about two yards shy of a first down. 154 receiving yards a week ago for Reed. That's an excellent route by the young guy. And, and for a guy who really hasn't played a whole lot of tight end, he played some wide receiver, he played some quarterback. And so some things are, are a little bit new for him. But I know when we visited with Mike Shanahan early in the year, he was raving about Jordan Reed. And he hadn't yet done much. But Mike Shanahan said, wait till he has that game. Well, he had it last week. What a good young player he is. Here's Javin up for the first half. And Alou on third down will go right back to the sideline and Morris right back in. That's a great job by the by the Redskins with the sack then on, on Robert Griffin. Being able to overcome that and pick up the first down. Closing in on the four-minute mark. Redskins for the second straight possession move in the Broncos territory. And on the first down, they give it to Morris with running room. Still on his feet. And three Broncos finally get him to the deck, but not before a gain of eight by Alfred Morris. Of course, we know what kind of route runner Jordan Reed is. And then the question is, you know, how effective can he be as a blocker? And, you know, he's primarily a receiver, as we know, but you've got to be able to do some of these things, and that's not easy to do. To run short side, you have to be able to get the edge, and Jordan Reed is the one who allowed Alfred Morris then to get onto the edge. That's a, that's a good job by Jordan Reed in run blocking. Late play of the drive. The drive which started at the five-yard line. Morris trying to get to the first down appears to be short. And we check in once more from Los Angeles with Kurt Menefee. Maybe it's the afternoon of long touchdown runs. We showed you Terrell Pryor for the Raiders earlier. This is the rookie Andre Ellington for the Arizona Cardinals. Takes it 80 yards against the Falcons. 14-6 Cardinals on top. Troy, Joe, Troy, Tom, and Pam. loses that game, they're in trouble. They're in big trouble. They've dug themselves quite a hole. Baloo on third and a foot. And he picks up the first down to the Denver 32-yard line. And that's what I was talking about as far as, you know, yeah, third down back. He catches the ball well. He pass protects. But, you know, he's able to pick up these kinds of yards. You know, it's not easy. He's got good vision. He's low to the ground. He's powerful. Good job really finding out where he needed to go to pick up that first down. Well, we talked about this Denver rushing defense among the best in the NFL. Now, some may say that's because they have big leads and teams don't run it. The Redskins are running it so far today. Very impressive drive here for the Redskins, Mr. Aikman. It started from their own five-yard line, and this is a tenth play on it. They've done a nice job running the football. Taking it right at this defense. Play fake to Halu, wide open off to the right of Griffin. He had Joshua Morgan instead tries to fire down around the 20-yard line to Jordan Reed, and it's incomplete, and Reed is still not up. Boy, the Broncos lost Joshua Morgan coming out of the backfield. Griffin taking another hit. Here's Morgan. He's just saying, give me the ball. Today's game is sponsored by the Samsung Galaxy Note 3 and Galaxy Gear. I'll go back and take a look at that play. You're going to see Josh Morgan, and he's on the swing route. Nobody runs with him. And you know, then you see the other one 
in the corner of the end zone is Pierre Garcon, who's wide open. He has two guys that would have had big plays. Josh Morgan's probably the guy who should have gotten it because last week the Colts ran that exact same play. They're able to score a touchdown on that play, and the Redskins come back with the same look. And RG3 just got locked in then on Jordan Reed, and we'll find out what his condition is, but a, a real missed opportunity there for the Redskins. Well, Morgan having to come out of the game, or Reed rather, he looks like he's okay. He'll sit out this second down and 10. Redskins started this drive from their own five yard line. They're at the Denver 32. Griffin rolling, rolling, now we'll run it. And a big third down coming up. And Jordan Reed is coming back from the Washington Redskins sideline. Well, that's a good thing for the Washington Redskins. You know, we, we've talked a little bit about RG3 and where he's at, where his health is, and yeah, he is moving better. And we saw that a couple of weeks ago against the Cowboys. Did not throw the ball well in that game. In this first half, Tom, it just does not look like he's seeing the field real well. They're playing coverage. If it's not there, come underneath. There's been times there's been open people underneath. Blitz coming. Griffin gets it away to a wide. And Halu, and he has a first down to the Denver 17. So the elusiveness of Griffin bought him a little time there. Even on this play, Tom, you can see Halu here out of the backfield, and you know if he gets it to him right away, Halu's able to catch that ball and continue to run, gets a lot more out of the play. But still, it's a big first down, third down conversion then for the Redskins. They've got Halu off to the right of Griffin. No out for Morris in the game. Broken up trying to find Garcon. And it's incomplete as a call on the field. Great coverage once more by Rogers Crowbarty. And Ianacho is down injured. Looked like that ball did hit the ground before end of the arms of Ianacho. Got a lot of guys going down here in this first half. You're right, when it happened in real time, I thought Ianacho maybe came away with that one, but clearly it hit the ground. Duke Ianacho nearly came up with a miraculous interception here, but then was injured as Gar or Reed, rather. Made contact with him. He gets twisted up pretty good. You know, after he tried getting up, trying to make the play on the interception. College free agent a year ago, played in two games, had a great training camp this year and won the starting job. You root for every player to be all right, but Neonacho has come from San Jose State to win a starting spot in this Denver secondary. Well, the good news for the Broncos is they're able to bring in a guy like Mike Adams, a veteran player who last year was the starter, and that's who Ian Nacho beat out in camp. Second down and 10. There you get a look at Adams, wearing number 20. And so we'll take a timeout and check in with Kurt Minifee, telling us what's coming up at halftime. How about it, Mr. Minifee? Coming up on the Visa Halftime, we'll have highlights from a very busy weekend, including TV Steelers against Howie's Raiders. And the Jets go for a win in Cincinnati. It's all coming up on the Visa Halftime. You know, Tyler, this has been an outstanding drive as we talked about starting out on their own five-yard line to get down here in scoring position. And they've run the ball well, and you know, all that's good. But the best part of it, in addition to coming away with points, is they've been able to chew time off the clock and keep Peyton Manning over on the sidelines. 14th play of the drive. We're right at a minute to play until halftime. Second down at 10. The blitz coming. And the pass is caught by Jordan Reed down to the 12-yard line. It brings up third down. 50 seconds remain. Well, they've still got plenty of time, and you know, they don't need to rush this on third down. 
That's smart that they're huddling up and not trying to get to the line and not make sure they have a good call to play. Redskins do not have a timeout remaining. Third down. Griffin to the end zone. Well, that looked like a good throw. Uh, and unable to get it was Santana Moss. Now fourth down. And out comes the field goal unit. This is an outstanding throw by Robert Griffin. He puts it right there. That's a play that Santana Moss normally makes. You see the way that he's able to thread that right in there. It doesn't get any better than that. Of course, we saw Raheem Moore, number 26, come across, and maybe that was enough of a distraction to get Santana Moss's eyes off the ball. Third week now for their new long snapper, Kyle Nelson, after the injury to Nick Sundberg. And blown dead before the snap. Well, that might be on Denver for an extra guy in the huddle. They were trying to get Dominique Rogers Cromarty off the field. And this may then change defense at 12 men in the formation. You got the it. snap is imminent. A five-yard penalty that results in a first down. How about that? Yeah, I was trying to decide, trying to figure exactly where the chains were. It, it, it was hard to tell if it was going to be enough for a first down or not, if they're going to have to come out and measure it. But, you know, it is a first down, and now the Redskins with another opportunity. Here he is right here, Dominic Rogers from Marty. But what an opportunity now for the Washington Redskins with still time on the clock. All right, so a first down at the seven. Flag down to the end zone. It is caught for a touchdown by Leonard Hankerson, but we wait on the penalty flag thrown behind the line of scrimmage. And the Redskins celebrating as though this one's Holding. going against Denver. Defense number 99. How about that drive for the Washington Redskins? Well, Leonard Hankerson, he's pulling up. He just is able to find the open spot, and Robert Griffin finds him. I don't know that that was necessarily designed, but he's able to work back to the open spot on the on the field in the end zone, and Robert Griffin delivers another another good pass. That's a, that is, Tom. It's a great drive by the Redskins, taking it 95 yards for a touchdown. It was a first down run by Alfred Morris that went for 27 yards to give him some breathing room. A couple of third down conversions, ran the football well. And now all of a sudden, 19 seconds remain, and we're tied at seven coming up in November. Some cops are born, others are made. Get ready for the next evolution of cop drama. The show critics are calling obsession-worthy, almost human. The two-night series premiere starts Sunday, November the 17th, on Fox. Well, we'll go back and take a look at the the touchdown and, and how Robert Griffin is able to work his way back. See how he steps up in the pocket, really does a nice job navigating the pass rush and then finding Leonard Hankerson who you know, he was a bit of a question mark this week as well on Tuesday he did something to his foot not sure exactly even how it happened said he might have been playing with his kids during their off day and he was somewhat of a questionable guy coming in and he makes a nice play then to cap off that drive 16 plays chewing up better than seven minutes keeping the highest scoring team in the NFL on the sideline seconds remain here in the opening half. Talked about all the offensive numbers for the Denver Broncos so far this year. First in total offense, first in points per game. They average 42. Week two in New York. The fewest first half points the Broncos have scored. That number was 10. Right now it sits at seven and it's going to stay at seven. Well, and Mike Shanahan's return to Denver. 
He will trot back to the locker room, and I would imagine feeling mighty good about the way things are going. Let's go to Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles in a 7-7 game. The Redskins marching 95 yards to tie it in the final seconds of the first half. Time for the Visa halftime. 7-7 at halftime. On our way to the second half. And, you know, you got one team averaging 42 a game. You have another team averaging 25 a game. I wish we had a few bucks for every time we figured, well, here's a shootout. We thought the same thing last week. 7-7 now, Troy, this week. Well, Jim Hazlitt, the defensive coordinator for the Redskins, he has to be thrilled with what he saw of his defense. We talked about it. they got some young players in the secondary. They've been able to get Denver to third down, and then for you know a variety of reasons, they've been able to get off of the field on third down. That's been the real key. Of course, the last drive aided by the penalty. But the Redskins running the football has shortened the game for Peyton Manning, and he hasn't gotten a lot of opportunities. He's played well. We invite you to follow your favorite team all season long. You can go to iTunes.com slash NFL. The Broncos will get the football to begin the second half. We mentioned it. Peyton Manning was standing on that sideline. You take into account timeouts, a couple of injuries. throws his next pass that roughly occurred about 45 minutes ago let's check in with pam oliver well tom that beautiful 95 yard drive made mike shanahan a really happy man but what about all those hits on robert griffin we talked about that at the half he said it's a number of factors one is protection another may be timing issues for the broncos that 12 in on the field penalty obviously hurt them but John Fox said the game is 7-7 for the Broncos safety. Duke Iannaccio has an ankle injury and is questionable. Back to you. Man, thank you. Now the Broncos have scored on their opening possession of the second half in six of their seven games so far this year. That's defended beautifully on the catch by Moreno. And a good job over there by the rookie Dave Anderson. Well, here are the numbers, and you see, I mean, a lot of balance there by the Washington Redskins. The biggest thing is them controlling in the clock, winning the time of possession. Manning. And again, the catch is made, but very little. Uh-oh. Limping off the sideline and, uh, and now moving a little bit better, but clearly reaching, it looked like, for that ankle initially. Their talented young tight end, Julius Thomas. They've had that twisted in the tackle there by Josh Wilson, and Thomas is leaving the field on his third down. Hurry, hurry! Ah. Mike! 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 Reception is made by Decker, and that'll move the chains of first down. So there's a play we saw earlier with Julius Thomas, and he reaches down there for that ankle as he went to the ground. And, uh, and you know, like we said, a young guy who's so raw. Really enjoyed visiting with him on Friday, but he's got a huge upside. What a delightful young man. We talked to Thomas. He said, football was my first love. But he didn't play football from the time he was 13 to the time he was 22. Did not play in high school, played four years of basketball at Portland State, one year of college football. Well, he's been working with the right quarterback as far as coming along in this league. Manning under heavy pressure. Is this a live ball? It is. Flags come down appears to be covered up by the Redskins and flags are flying from every direction. That's Brian Arakpo at the bottom of the play. It was Ryan Kerrigan who came around and is able to get a hold of the ball. As Peyton Manning comes back, you see that clearly the ball is out before his arm is going forward. A good job. You know, not bad protection. You got Orlando Franklin trying to keep him off of him, but here's the end of that play. During a loose ball, holding number 18, offense, but penalties decline. 
First down. And Peyton Manning he gets caught grabbing Brian Arakpo, who once the ball came out of his hands, he's trying to get to it. And that's where they got Peyton holding him, trying to keep, <laughs> keep him from getting to the football. But an excellent job by Ryan Kerrigan. That's the pressure that you need to get on Peyton Manning. He got banged around pretty good last week. Four sacks against the Colts hit a number of other times. So now the first big momentum swing. And the Redskins trying to take advantage of it. They give it to Morris. And he carries down to the 15-yard line. That'll be a gain of four on first down for Alfred Morris. And we talk about all the fumbles that the Broncos have had offensively. And, and of course, Ronnie Hillman not playing. That's Peyton Manning's sixth fumble. It's the fourth one that he's lost. So, you know, that happens a lot with quarterbacks getting the ball knocked out when you're in the pocket. But, you know, that's the break that the Redskins were looking for defensively. Set! Red 80! Red set! That's old-fashioned power football there. And Morris out of the eye formation barrels inside the five down to the three. Well, Trent Williams here, and then you can see the cutback that they run with Alfred Morris. It's because of the block by Trent Williams that creates the lane. Josh Morgan, again, doing a good job blocking at the wide receiver position, and that's a nice hole for Alfred Morris. He has had himself a nice game. He has not yet had 100 yards rushing this season, Tom, but that's only because the most carries he's had in the game is 19. And Washington takes the lead for the first time. The strip by Kerrigan, the fumble recovery by Arakpo, and strong power running by Morris to give Washington the lead. Well, just a, an outstanding job by the Redskins' offensive line. You know, the old Redskin Hogs, they... They showed up today, and they have really all year long, and they've done a good job of creating some lanes for Alfred Morris. This defense has not been able to hold him back. Point after by Ty Forbath is good. So the big break they needed. Manning and the Broncos, a rare spot playing from behind. Today's game is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. And by Ford. Only Ford gives you EcoBoost, fuel economy, and a whole lot more. Alfred Morris, three straight rushes following the turnover. And Mike Shanahan in his return to Denver. He's been here once after working as an assistant coach in Denver. As head coach of the Raiders came back. But his first visit back since being the head coach in Denver. And the Redskins have a seven-point lead thanks to Alfred Morris. Jim Haslett hoping that his defense can play in the second half like it did in the first half, holding Denver to just seven points. First possession here in the second stanza. A fumble that's converted into a touchdown. Hey, Robin, podium! Robin, Robin! Robin, podium! Intercepted. The receiver fell down, and that is the Angelo hole to the end zone. No penalty flags on the field. Demarius Thomas looking around for a penalty flag. Well, he's been matched up on him throughout this game. You see, he gets physical with Demarius Thomas coming off the line. I, I think it was a good no call. D'Angelo Hall is in his face. Demarius Thomas falls down as he's trying to run the slant route, and D'Angelo Hall then in man coverage is there to make the play. Two possessions coming out at half for the Broncos. Two turnovers by Peyton Manning. Point after is good, and my, oh, my. After losing for the first time a week ago, turning the ball over three times, committing 12 penalties, 
Now, all of a sudden, the two turnovers and Washington, a two-touchdown lead. Well, they're playing physical with the receivers, and, and as a quarterback, you know, he's got to turn that ball loose. I mean, you can't throw the slant route and wait and see if the guy's going to keep his feet and beat the defender on the route. So you throw it with timing, and unfortunately for the Broncos, Demarius Thomas falls down, D'Angelo Hall right there to make a play. Nate Manning in a state of disbelief. You know, the one thing the Broncos defense is as good at times as they have been, one thing they have not done well is when the Broncos turn the ball over as the Redskins now have their fifth defensive touchdown of the season. That's two of them this year by that man, D'Angelo Hall. But when the Broncos turn it over, they give up huge points. They turn it over 15 times. Opponents have scored on 13 of those 15 turnovers to the tune now of 79 points. Well, the Redskins defensively last year gave up yards, but they created takeaways. They were not doing that as well this year, but they needed them in this game, and they've gotten them. Brendan Holiday going to try and make something happen out of the end zone. And he has run out of bounds to the 25-yard line. You know, D'Angelo Hall is regarded as a corner who likes to take chances. Normally, he's playing off. He prefers to play off of a receiver and then clue the quarterback. But they know they cannot give these receivers as much as possible free access off the line of scrimmage. And D'Angelo Hall just does a nice job. He's having a nice year. Jordan Pugh just picked back up by the Redskins this week. They're taking a look at him. We'll be right back. Jordan Pugh made the Redskins team initially. This season, they had to cut him loose when they needed help on special teams. They brought in Trenton Robinson. And now Pew back with the Redskins this week and had to leave with an injury. Certainly hope he's all right. Let's check in uh, on the injury to Julius Thomas with Pam Oliver. Well, Tom, maybe adding to the Broncos' woes on offense, uh, their tight end, Julius Thomas, he went into the locker room a couple of possessions ago where he remains, but not before throwing his helmet in frustration. Thomas has an ankle injury, and his, his return is questionable. Pam, thank you very much. That's a first down reception, Manning to Wes Welker up to the 42-yard line. That's a bit of a concern with Julius Thomas. It was the ankle injury that really eliminated his rookie season and then cost him all of his second season. He's had surgery, whether or not it's the same ankle, but fairly significant. And now we've got another, we've got a number of guys following Pam's report, a number of guys down, key players, this time Brian Arakpo. Brian is at the, you know, that's the chip by the back on the way out. And, the, you know, those guys don't like that. Forget the fact that he went down with an injury, but they don't like it, period. But as he's trying to speed rush then around the edge, he takes a shot, and to what extent, we'll find out. It's no Sean Moreno who delivered that blow on Arakpo. Of course, Arakpo, a pro bowler in each of his first two seasons with the Redskins, only played in two games all of last year after he tore a chest muscle. Of course, these Denver Broncos are keeping an eye on the Kansas City Chiefs. Andy Reid off to an 8-0 start his first year in Kansas City. Alex Smith proving to everybody that, hey, I can lead a team in the National Football League. Yeah, I mean, they've done a great job. All the talk in the AFC has been about the Denver Broncos, and, and everyone's still kind of overlooking the Kansas City Chiefs. Well, within this division, a much-needed bye week for the Broncos. As we see Arakpo get up, that's a good sign. But a much-needed bye week next week for the Broncos, see if they can get healthy. But then they've got a tough little stretch there. They travel to San Diego, and then two out of the next three weeks, they'll play the Kansas City Chiefs, which is really going to determine who emerges out of this division. And of course, Kansas City going into play today had 10 more sacks than the next closest defense in the NFL. Pitch on first down to Moreno. Lead frogs D'Angelo Hall. And is out of bounds at the 48-yard line. You know, the one thing that the Redskins have really done a nice job of in this game 
as you see what's happened after the Broncos first drive the touchdown really haven't done much sense but the Redskins who have given up a lot of big plays have not given up any yet in this game underneath to Roker got a block and Roker inside the 30 And just as soon as you say that, then they're able to get the ball to Welker for a big play in the passing game. You know, he didn't have to throw it very far down the field, but they get the blocking then once Welker gets the ball in his hands. So a nice game then for, for Denver. Monte Ball, the rookie out of Wisconsin, bounces off the tackler. And able to pick up three down to the 25-yard line. People have been wondering, with Ball start to get more and more carries, we're talking about a young man who in the history of college football, Division I football, more rushing yards, rushing touchdowns and total touchdowns than any player ever. Let's come at Manning able to get it away. And off the fingertips of ball right there was Amerson in coverage. You know, they've been playing man coverage, Tom, on the outside. That's what that's what Peyton Manning talked about on Friday was what the Redskins do a good job of is they'll show that they're going to play man. You would think the corner then is going to run with the receiver. Then they peel off of it, and they take the guy in the flat. That's exactly what Anderson was able to do on the last play. Ryan Kerrigan, the first to jump into the neutral zone. Neutral zone infraction. Defense, number 91. Five-yard penalty. Remains third down. Well, Ryan Kerrigan, he's the guy who was able to strip Peyton Manning in the pocket. And, you know, I really like the way that he plays. I talked about how hard all of these players play. Jim Haslett's got them flying around to the football, even though they have given up yardage. But Ryan Kerrigan is one of those guys. And... He's done a nice job. Brian Arakpo, they're glad to have him back out on the field. So third and seven after the penalty becomes third and two. And Manning rolling. Dangerous throw to the seldom used fourth tight end, Virgil Green. And now a fourth down. It looks like the Broncos are going for it. Well, confusion on the play. You got two guys are trying to run the crossing route. Eric Decker's there, Virgil is there as well Virgil Green and, and here they are going for it on fourth down surprised by this yeah, I'm a little surprised you know playing at home that you still got plenty of time I take the points they hand it off and Moreno with a first down to the 16 They get the double team in the middle, and it's a good push inside, and that's what creates the hole. You can see right here, the center, Manny Ramirez, and then Luis Vasquez, who was at right tackle last week, they get the push and allow no Sean Moreno to pick up the first down. Of course, the Broncos thrilled to have Orlando Franklin back in there at right tackle. He set out last week's game, catch made inside the five, and down to the three-yard line is Demarius Thomas. It's first and goal, Denver. You know, not an easy call for John Fox to make either there on fourth down. Thinking back to last week, a, a number of times, third and short, and they fail to convert. And he decides to go for it on fourth down and was confident they'd pick it up. And initially, I thought maybe they'd run the hard count, but keeps this drive going. We've got Monte Ball in the backfield. And out of the shotgun from the three. Beautifully covered by Josh Wilson. Yeah, they put Wes Welker in the backfield, and, you know, you come out of the backfield here, and you've got a two-way break then on Josh Wilson. That's not easy coverage. Now, it's a ball that's a little bit behind, but it doesn't take anything away from the job that Josh Wilson does on a very difficult receiver to defend when he's got that kind of field to work. Once more in shotgun. On a second down and goal. Trying to shove him into the end zone. He got there. He gets bottled up immediately, and you 
see the scrum and then the push. And the Denver Broncos offensive line says, hey, we can do it too. Big Manny Ramirez, number 66. That's why they get those big guys in a weight room, isn't it? <laughs> Shove somebody in the end zone. I suppose. Is that why they do it? I don't know. <laughs> That's a great drive by Denver answering. After turning the ball over the previous two possessions and finding themselves down 14. You know, gutsy call by John Fox. Going for it on fourth down. Keeps the drive alive. And they're able to pay off and come away with a touchdown. Monte Ball. Scores his first NFL touchdown. Point after is good. Peyton Manning bringing the Broncos within seven. Now Mike Shanahan's offense looks to respond midway through the third. The high-flying Denver Broncos through seven games, the highest scoring team in NFL history. Two points better than Kurt Warner and the Rams of 2000. Where's Tom Brady and the Patriots in 2007? A Super Bowl winning season in 2009 for Drew Brees and the Saints. But responding there, that's a big touchdown drive after falling behind by 14. Well, big time touchdown, not surprised. I mean, Peyton Manning, <laughs> he's not afraid of, a, afraid of a shootout. As we saw earlier this season against the Dallas Cowboys, one of the great regular season games played in recent memory. That's Raheem Morris. Works with the Redskins secondary. Well, Raheem Morris, he had he had his work cut out for him this week. You know, with Brandon Merriweather, who was suspended for one game, surprised that that got reduced from two games to one. But nevertheless, he was out going with some young players there at the safety position. You know, how do you hold up against this group of the Denver Broncos? And they've been able to. One, 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 one. Set. Set on you. Face up. This is Alfred Morris. And a gain of close to three on first down. And we send it back to Los Angeles to Joel Platt. Thanks, Tom. We go to Cincinnati. And why would we show you this game? Because Andy Dalton, career high, fifth touchdown pass to Marvin Jones, who has caught four TDs in this game. Bengals all over the Jets, 42 to 9. Tom. Well, Troy, that's another team in the AFC people better start keeping an eye on. Well, you've been keeping an eye on them. You called that one, didn't you? Coming in. You like the Bengals. Tough day to be a Jet fan. Completion to Garcon, and he has a first down up to the 34-yard line, and a penalty flag comes in late, some joy going on back and forth. It was right back there in the vicinity of where Robert Griffin was when he turned it loose, see if he took a hit late, and, you know, sure enough, we saw personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number 99. We saw the Colts last week, penalty. or excuse me, the Broncos last week. Get hit with a penalty one a lot worse as they go at it between those two. But, yeah, you come in late on the quarterback, and no, how, no matter how insignificant you may think it is, they're going to call it, and it's Vickerson once again. Yeah, in fact, he was flagged twice for unnecessary roughing penalties. Fined $10,000 for a couple of hits. Yeah, you can see and John Fox saying, I can't watch it anymore. No, you, I mean, hey, we all know the climate that we're in in the NFL and you just you can't hit the quarterback once the ball's out I mean you just got to treat him with kid gloves Morris off to the right side and a gain of two on first hand I was talking about that play from last week and they were <laughs> calling it the flop and that's a good name for it, too, because right at the end of this play, but yet Vickerson, he does come in. He comes in and bumps him at the end of the play, much like he tries to do here. And these guys, they want to hit the quarterback. That's that's the way they get paid. They 
want to get back there and make that guy punish. And they try to skirt the, the rules a little bit, but the official is right there watching it throughout the play. Lewis trying to cut it back to the inside, at least for the first two plays. The Denver defense on this series standing tall. Well, they, they do a good job because they're able to get some penetration then behind the line of scrimmage. And Jack Del Rio knows that if they continue to run the ball the way that they have with Alfred Morris, Mike Shanahan's going to continue to call it. But those last two plays, they played it very well. well one of his defenders, Kayvon Webster, the rookie out of South Florida, injured on the field a third down when we come back. Kayvon Webster appears to be okay. In fact, he wanted to stay in the game. Well, here's what happened on the play. He's mixing it up with Aldrick Robinson, and then he goes to the ground, and well, he got buried on the bottom of it. But, yeah, he was starting to go back into the game. He's got to stay out at least one play. Third down and seven. Only a three-man rush. And Griffin flushed out of the pocket. And that's caught, but out of bounds. Robert Griffin had time in the pocket, but good man coverage by the Broncos, and just nobody really did much of anything to give Griffin a place to go with the football. You see how it looked to him, and as he starts to scramble, just nothing there. And finally, he gets, he gets the ball out of his hands, but short of the first down. Rocca on the punt. And over in. And just punts it out of bounds. They're not going to take a chance on Holiday. Of course, the Broncos and the Redskins, many will remember, got together in Super Bowl 22 out in San Diego. Denver, the early 10-0 lead. But then Doug Williams, four touchdowns in the second quarter. Redskins rookie Timmy Smith making the first start of his career, a couple of touchdowns. Washington winning, final score of 42 to 10. You were there, Troy. I was at that game, yeah. I was in college at UCLA. I was working event staff, so I was secured. Come on, a yellow jacket and watching John Elway. They jumped out 10 nothing in that ball game, but I found myself a nice little perch to watch the game, and there was not much security on my part, I'll promise you. <laughs> On the first half, they're going to pitch it to Moreno. That's maybe uh, so. You're telling me you were roughly where? Were you the upper deck? Were you in the same lower bowl? Where were you as as muscle no, for that I, game? <laughs> I was lower bowl, and while I'm watching the game, I found me a nice spot to watch it, a nice viewing spot. And then someone's hollering at me, saying, "Hey, security, we got a fight up here." And I said, "Man, I'm busy watching this game. Bunch of college kids working event staffs. That's good stuff." Reception made, and that'll be good enough for a first hand. Of course, we talk about Mike Shanahan and his time here in Denver and the two world championships with, with Elway as the quarterback. He was also the assistant coach for the other three appearances yep. by the Denver Broncos. So he enjoyed a lot of success while he was here in Denver with this organization. Hurry, hurry. Well, to play here in the third quarter, Manning. Good protection, looking down the sideline and overthrew his intended target, Decker. Well, watch 30 minutes of live NFL games free right now through October the 29th. Just call Star Star NFL to download now. Second and ten. Seemingly every play, Denver receivers are looking for a penalty flag. A lot of these Denver receivers got very frustrated last week with the physical play of Indianapolis. Well, this is how they want to play these receivers. You can see Peyton Manning, he tells C.J. Anderson what route to run before the snap of this ball. He, he turns around and, he, and you can hear him, he says, hey, you got the flat route. So after the fake... You know, then C.J. Anderson, first time to play, he runs a flat route, but a lot on his plate directing some of these younger players. Third down to 10. And 
and the catch is made, and it's good enough for a first down by Wes Welker up to the 40. What a great job by Peyton Manning with pressure in his face. You can see how calm he is. Stephen Bowen comes right in the middle, and Peyton able to kind of elevate up on his toes and find Wes Welker for the first down. Decker on the slant. Tackled by Amerson. That'll be a gain of eight. The exact same coverage that Demarius Thomas fell down on for the interception. So now you come back to Decker and you gotta you gotta have confidence. Those guys are gonna be okay. And of course, these guys have been running good routes for a long time for them. CJ Anderson trying to get to the 49, which would be a first down, and he appears to have gotten there. And we talked about Peyton, Peyton's ankles coming into the game, and you know it's, he seems to be okay. I mean, when I was watching him earlier, moving around a little bit slow, I'm sure they're sore, but that's not a big part of his game, and certainly being in the pocket and throwing the football, he's doing that just fine. Also pattern, and once more it is Decker, who's inside the 40, down to the 31-yard line. Well, that's what you do versus all the bump man coverage as you run those crossing routes and it's then hard for these defenders you're going to see them come across and you got to navigate a lot of people if you're the defender in coverage and Emerson is trying to stay up with Decker and trying to navigate the other crossing routes and it creates lane inside the 25 it just seems like with as we got another another player down for the Redskins. This time it's Kedrick Golston. Golston goes all the way back to the second go round with Joe Gibbs as head coach in Washington. Well, they're looking at Golston and we're wondering if maybe Thomas was injured on that last play. Coming out of the game and asking to come out of the game. Yeah, D'Angelo Hall, you saw him break in front of him, and as he did, then he, he caught that that hand or, or wrist is what maybe it is, but looks like he's going to be okay, and Kedrick Golston still on the ground trying to get up now and get to the sideline. Well, this Broncos offense, though, it just seems like you know, they get behind, and, and then all of a sudden there's this razor focus that comes over them. And, you know, once they get their backs to the wall, they're a, they're a hard group to contain. Certainly some urgency when they got down 14 points, and now they're threatening to get more on this drive. Second down and four. Broncos down seven. Closing in on two minutes to play in the third quarter. Moreno out of the backfield. It's first down for Denver to the 12-yard line. We're going to run vertical with Jacob Tammy at tight end. He's going to release. Then you got London Fletcher in the middle who he's going to turn. He's going to try to carry that guy up the middle. And when that happens in that coverage as a quarterback, there's nobody then for the check down on the back. It's just a great job of Peyton Manning recognizing the coverage and doing or going to the right guy with a football. Empty backfield. Crossing pattern to Marius Thomas. And he's to the five. That's a gain of eight. Short crossing patterns. They found the underbelly of this Washington defense on these last two drives. Six of eight on this drive is Manning. Twelfth play of the drive, spanning 78 yards. Monte Ball, very close to a first down, and looks to have it inside the three. I think that's part of the greatness of Peyton Manning is his patience as a quarterback. You take the underneath things, that's what they're giving you. They don't want to give up the big play, and then as soon as you start creeping up on that, then you give one up over the top.
good coverage by the young player. Emerson, who last, I guess his sophomore year when he was in college, had 13 interceptions, would have been a first-round pick, stayed in, had a difficult last year in college. A nice game today. Oh. He scored his first career touchdown on the last Edward drive. Gets down to the one, inside the one, wrapped up by Nick Barnett. In comes Paul. Well, they can let this run the out if they wanted to. Looks like they're going to go ahead and get this one snapped. Denied the goal line. So now, a little time to think about it for John Fox. He went for it on fourth down earlier. Helped lead to a touchdown. Fourth down coming up. Fox NFL Sunday returns after these messages and a word from your local Fox station. Decision's already been made by John Fox. He's going for it. Fourth and goal inside the one down by seven. Now, I don't disagree yeah. with this call at all. It is interesting they're out of the shotgun. It turned him loose. Redskins having to call a timeout when out to the top of the screen when Jacob Tammy and D'Angelo Hall got lost. Well, you, get, you go into a, a week and you work on these types of things in practice as far as, you know, what you're going to run in these situations. And London Fletcher, being the veteran, realizes, hey, there's no, nobody out here covering Tammy. And he calls the timeout. We'll see if Denver tries to come back with the same look or if now they change the play up from what they were going to run. John Fox went for it on fourth down, their last possession. They converted on fourth down, wound up scoring a touchdown. They are three for three on fourth down this season. You see number 96, Mitch Unrein. He is a defensive lineman. Go! He is in the game. Go, go, Seth! And now in the backfield. They're going to throw it. And that is a touchdown to Joel Dreesen. Well, here's Dreesen. You're going to see the action by the receivers to where they push up the field and anyone then trying to get out into the flat to cover Dreesen is going to get caught up in the wash and all Peyton's trying to do is get away from the line of scrimmage enough so that he can get that throw off. So now point after away from tying it up. Fourteen fifty six to play and we are tied. Mike Shanahan coming back to Denver. And a man who took his job here, John Fox, who's won divisional championships in each of his first two years with the Bronco. Twice he decides to go for it on fourth down as John Fox, and both times ultimately leading to a touchdown. You know, they got down by 14 points, and, and like I said, then the Broncos, here they come. You know, I mean, all of a sudden they yep. start to execute. They're picking up first downs. A good job there on the fourth down play. They came back with a different play than they had originally showed that caused the Redskins to call timeout. <clears throat> Excuse me, they gave a look that they were going to just try to run the ball right up the middle, and then they were able to get everyone, you know, spread out a little bit. But a, a well-executed play by the Broncos to come away with the touchdown on fourth down. We were tied at seven at halftime. For those of you perhaps just joining us on an early evening back east, late afternoon here in the west, 16 plays, 83 yards, capped off by the touchdown reception to Dreesen. And we begin anew with nearly an entire quarter to play in Denver.
football for one more quarter here in Denver, and then it's off to Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Game four of the World Series. Joe Buck, Tim McCarver, and company with the Cardinals jumping out to a two games to one lead in a thriller last night. Well, what's in store for the final quarter here in Denver? Robert Griffin III, play action. Looking down the field and throws it behind Morgan, who is wide open at midfield. Boy, he had a chance, didn't he? It's a two-man route. They're going to block him up. They send one to the deep post. They got Josh Morgan then on the deep crossing route in behind it. And a ball that's thrown behind Morgan. He might have been able to make a little bit of a better adjustment to the football to make a play, but a missed opportunity there that would have been a huge play. This is an important drive for this Redskins offense that got the short field with the turnover by Peyton Manning on the fumble and then the touchdown by D'Angelo Hall. But they need to do something here. Looking for the home run ball down the field to Garcon. Overthrown. Not sure what Robert Griffin saw on that play. There was never a chance. There's two defenders deep. So the Redskins, who had so much success running, running, mixing an occasional throw, had this 14 point lead get away from them, and they've come out slinging it around. Of course, the first play should have been a big one. Well, for a pass defense that came in the league last in the NFL. They've held up well against this Redskins offense. Griffin has not even thrown for 100 yards in this game. Third down and 10, hit as he throws. And in and out of the hands of Robinson. And then nearly intercepted. There's the ball Aldrich Robinson just has to catch. Talked about him, he had two catches last week. Did a nice job, but he dropped the ball against the Lions earlier in the year that would have been the go-ahead touchdown and this was an opportunity to at least come away with a first down on a drive that the Redskins really needed to try to do something to take away some of the momentum that this offense has created for Denver and he fails to make the play. And then a shank off the foot of Rocca and the Broncos are going to get the football at the Washington 35-yard line. Sav Rocca has been so good punting the ball today, and he picked a bad time to shank one. Today's game is sponsored by State Farm. It pays to double check. Talk to your agent today. By Bud Light, official beer sponsor of the NFL. And by Walmart. Save money, live better. Walmart. How cool is this right here? That's, that's making me sick. That is Stuart huh? Schoenfeld <laughs> wearing a camera. That's the way he came into the ballpark today. No traffic problems that way. No. No, I'm not sure how those guys do it. Looks like a postage stamp when they're up. <laughs> right. They're just coming out. That was spectacular stuff. First down for the Broncos. They set up the screen to Moreno inside the 30. Inside the 10. Moreno to the end zone. Well, watch St. Beatles. Manny Ramirez, the left guard and center, and the job that they do getting out. And Perry Riley's a guy that they've got to make the block on to free Moreno, and they, they're they able to secure that. And then some pretty good blocking down the field as well, but a well-executed screen pass for the touchdown. Well, ever since that pick six into the arms of D'Angelo Hall, it's been three possessions for Denver, three touchdowns for Denver. Fox and the Broncos leading by a touchdown. You really talk about how four or five plays can change a game on a dime. 
Griffin missed a wide open receiver on first down. On third down, Aldrich Robinson drops a pass. Wide open would have been a first down. Rocca, a 15-yard punt. And on the very next play, the screen to Moreno goes for a touchdown. 21 unanswered. And now the Broncos have a seven-point lead. Well, next week on Fox NFL Sunday, it all begins with the Fox NFL kickoff show. That's at 11 a.m. Eastern time on Fox Sports 1, followed by Fox NFL Sunday at high noon Eastern on Fox Cowboys. That's where you'll be, Troy Aikman, back with your regular partner, Joe Buck. Cowboys with a tough loss today. Yep. Uh, we talk about what's happened here in the second half, and, you know, collectively, you've got to be able to control Peyton Man. That's special teams, certainly defense, but the offense has to help, and it's important that the Reds can start doing something on offense. Well, they're going to start out throwing again. Griffin with a month and a half back there in the pocket. And that's a completion. Good for a close to nine yards, and that's Jordan Reed who was shaken up earlier in the game. Of course, the Redskins last year started the season at three and six. Mike Shanahan was hinting that maybe it was time to start looking at other players and looking towards the future as Morris picks up the first down. Ball is on the ground, and the Redskins covered it up. That's Logan Paulson diving on top of the football. Redskins start out this year. They look very bad, especially on defense. As Trevathan stripped that thing away, but Paulson able to get it. They're hoping they can have the kind of run in the second half of the season like they did last year. Ball is stripped. And this time it is Denver to get it. Vaughn Miller, it is his second game back. Rip the football away, and Derek Wolf able to cover it up. Well, we've seen times in this game where Robert Griffin has held the ball when he's had people open. This isn't one of those times. There was nobody down the field, so he's waiting, and then Von Miller does what he does best. He's able to get in there on the quarterback, and when you get that kind of look, you're going right after the football, and he knocks it loose. You see the man coverage. It's one-on-one -on -one across the board, and nobody was able to shake free. He's making a nice play, even being able to make that catch. Because the ball was behind him, then you got the defender who overruns it. But well, this Redskins defense has been put in a difficult position with the punt by Rocca, and now the turnover giving Peyton Manning a short field once again. haven't been able to get anything the Redskins haven't you know throwing the football you know some of it's been good coverage some of it has been some errant throws and then some of it's been some drop passes but all of it combined has just kept this Redskins offense really being able to do a lot of the things that I thought they'd be able to do coming in adding a closing 300 yards passing once again and, and short of a touchdown is Monte Ball. Third down and goal. Those 79, 300 yard career passing games for Manning. He owns that record in NFL history. Well, I can tell you what Monte Ball's thinking if he gets the ball on, on this play. That is just hang on to it. Did a nice job on the last one. He knows why he's in the lineup. That's a dangerous call right there. Batted into the air by a Rackbow. 
And the Broncos fortunate that wasn't batted straight up in the air for somebody to go get it. Yeah, it's just a different game, you know, when you get down there that close to the goal line and, and you're throwing the football. You know, that's a that's a game that's foreign to me. Yep. You know, you just you know, when I was playing, you hand it off three times to Emmett Smith and let him score and you know, they have a great opportunity right down there on the one yard line and they fail to come away with the touchdown still make it if they make this they turned it into a two possession game but a long way to go Prater is not this this season that still has it. we talked about how good they've been down in the red zone Tom this season and you know, really good. The numbers that they've been able to put up scoring over 70% of the time touchdowns. So to get that close and then have to settle for a field goal, obviously very frustrating for Peyton Manning. Well, still a long way to go in this one. 11 14 to play, 31 21. Bob Miller causing that. Fumble a moment ago by Robert Griffin a third, which leads to the field goal. Redskins have just really gotten away from their run game here in this second half. And it's not like they've been playing catch up the entire second half. No, part of it is they had the short field. Of course, they lost the possession with the touchdown by D'Angelo Hall and then a short field with the fumble by Peyton Manning. So the numbers from that standpoint, a little bit misleading, but 24 unanswered points. And you can only hold Peyton Manning down for so long. The last possession I said, it's time for this offense to get going. You cannot ask the defense to go back out on the field without much rest and make a stop. Yet they were able to hold him to a field goal there after the turnover. This offense has to do their part. I want to get booted out of the end zone. Well, we figured we'd have a shootout here today. It didn't look that way early on. The Redskins tying the game on a 95-yard drive just before halftime. A fumble led to a touchdown, interception for a touchdown to put Washington up by 14. But now 24 unanswered by the highest scoring team in the NFL. And Tom, I think your point is, is well taken that there is still lots of time. I mean essentially a full quarter of play left that you don't have to then start throwing. You don't have to abandon the running game. Fly comes down. That is an incomplete pass. Dropping back to throw it on first down was Griffin. And this will back up the Redskins Holding. even further. Offense number 78. That penalty's declined. Second down. The Redskins are going to come with two tight ends. They're going to give the appearance that it's a running play and go with a two-man route looking for something vertical down the field. They're looking for the home run right off the bat. They haven't been able to get it. They haven't been able to get it all game. Broncos have been very good in coverage, and they're playing deep the Broncos secondary that has given up more 20 yard pass plays than anybody in football but they have held up well in this game and the, and the Redskins need to realize that and start taking some easier throws and start giving the ball a little bit more to Alfred Morris. All the way back at the five yard line in the arms of Derek Wolf. Boy, the hits beginning to really pile up now on Robert Griffin III. Uh, he's been taking hits ever since this game began, really. I mean, some shots outside the pocket, some of which he could have avoided, got the ball out. But those those shots right in your face, like we just saw from Derek Wolf, you know, those are hard shots to absorb. They need to get to the 30 for a first down. Ball at the 11. Screen to Garcon. And that gets him up to the 20, but it is three and out for the Redskins again. 
I think that play there, Tom, they're just, you know, you'd like to see that one on first down as opposed to trying to hit the home run. And, you know, third and long, they're just trying to get as much field position back as possible. I don't think they really anticipated that, that play would, would warrant a first down, but at least give Sap Rocca a little bit of room to work. Returnable for Holliday. And he's run out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Under 10 minutes to play. Broncos with a ball and a 10-point lead. It's sponsored by Pizza Hut. Stuffing three cheeses into their crust since, well, this weekend, it's new. Been a wonderful weather weekend here in Denver, Colorado. Spectacular late Sunday yeah, afternoon. And the hometown Broncos now with 9.48 to play. Going to try and burn a little clock on the ground, but Moreno runs out of bounds. You know, the Redskins offense to end that first half, what a great drive they had, Tom. Down the field, ran the ball well, mixed it up a little bit, took time off the clock, and it was as if they emptied their bucket. You know, on that drive, they just... They just really have not been able to get anything going offensively since that time. Macari Rambo getting the start today for the suspended Brandon Merriweather. And he, the crowd has been booing regularly with a number of Redskins being shaken up as if to imply guys are trying to slow down the pace of this Denver offense. NFC East, well, the Dallas Cowboys really missed a big chance today. They led in that game with under a minute. The Lions did not have a timeout after the Cowboys kicked a field goal to go up six. And the Lions bang, 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 go down the field and win it. And the Cowboys are back to 500 as a division leader. The Giants beat the Eagles, and don't look now. The Giants are only two games out of first place. Oh, stop. <laughs> There's ten games to go. I know, you're right. I mean, you're right. When they hadn't won a game yet, you know, I was saying, hey, they're not out of it yet. And they put a couple wins together. That NFC East is going to be fun to, fun to follow. I don't know how good the football is, but it's going to be fun to follow. Yeah. the first down to the Washington 43. Well, this guy's been doing this a long time. It's pretty remarkable watching him. You know, in practice on Friday, Tom, I was, I've been to a lot of Friday practices. I've taken part in a lot of Friday practices. And, and to watch these receivers, Wes Welker in particular, the way that he works on what normally is a slower paced day was awfully impressive. Burning nearly the entire play clock. Anderson still on his feet. And that is a first down carry. Playing in his first NFL game, C.J. Anderson. Well, that's great balance on his part. He gets low to the ground. He uses his right hand to keep his, keep his balance and get a little more yards out of it. And I talked about him. He got injured at the end of training camp. They were about to put him on IR. They decided not to, and that tells you all you need to know about C.J. Anderson as an undrafted free agent and what they thought of him. I mean, and now he's getting his first opportunity and really doing a nice job. And just throw him into that stable of guys they've got it, got it running back here in Denver. What about some of the early headline acts from action around the NFL? Ho hum, Drew Brees, another 300-yard game. This one with five touchdowns. Kaepernick. In London, a big win over Jacksonville, and Matthew Stafford turned the ball over three times with interceptions. Lions gave it away five times, but he delivered at the end of the game. Well, and that game meant a lot to him. You know, a Dallas kid went to Highland Park High School and rooted for the Cowboys growing up and beat them a couple years ago. They're in Dallas, and then to come back and win this game the way that he was able to it was a big win for the Detroit Lions just keeping pace in their own division of course Chicago will be without Jay Cutler anywhere from four to six weeks so we'll see how that plays out but you know 
you talked about it earlier. You thought Green Bay was the class of that NFC North. Is Detroit's play making you, you think maybe they have a shot? You're going to have that game Thanksgiving. Yeah, I thought coming into the season that, you know, still thought the Packers were, you know, the best in the division and, and probably still are. You know, I mean, they've had a number of injuries, but I wouldn't count them out just yet. But of the other teams that could challenge, I felt it was Detroit, and so far they've, They've proven that. Now, the Bears have been good, but without Cutler, yeah. you know, what kind of team are they? Although Josh McCown has done a good job for them. They did a great job against the Redskins last week. In that 45-41 thriller. Manning looking down the field. The ball's tipped, and it's intercepted. Jordan Pugh just brought back to the Redskins, fumbles the ball. And they're saying he's down. The round caused the fumble. So hold on a minute. Just when Peyton Manning and the Broncos had a chance to perhaps put this one on ice. A Redskins take away. Well, E.J. Biggers initially should have had the interception. But he's unable to make a play. He tracks this very well. He plays Welker perfectly down the middle. And Jordan Pugh, as you said, he just got... Picked up again after being released a week ago because of the suspension to Brandon Merriweather. He's there to take the deflection and talk about a key stop for Jim Hazlitt in this defense, not allowing the game to get away from him any more than it already has. And Peyton Manning frustrated with that one. since Alfred Morris carried on three straight plays, capping it off with a touchdown. The Redskins have had the ball on four possessions since, and that's the first time he's touched it. Well, they gave that same look that they tried to go downfield on the previous possession on first down, and Broncos weren't fooled at all. Well, a two-possession game here. With 7.20 to play. And intercepted by Denver. Chris Harris was his third interception of the season. It looked like the Redskin wide receiver fell down. Yeah, Pierre Garcon, he's trying to come out of the break. He falls. Chris Harris right there to make a play on it. The Denver Broncos, Tom, defensively last year were a top five defense. They were outstanding. Jack Del Rio had this group playing awfully well. They come into this season without Champ Bailey. They don't have Von Miller. They've given up a lot of yardage. And looking at them, you believe that they're only going to get better. And I think they're still going to continue to get a lot better than what we've seen here today. But they've been awfully good. Well, they have Woodyard back. He was out a couple of weeks. You talked about Miller. Serving the six-game suspension. They're hoping to get Bailey back after the bye week next week. Moreno. Strong running. That's just rare, Tom, as we got a penalty on the field. It's holding. Offense number 66. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat first down. You know, it's rare that you have a great offense and a great defense. They had that last year. That's why they missed a great opportunity in that playoff game against the Ravens. But Jack Del Rio, they get overlooked because of Peyton Manning. But this defense last year was excellent. And I think by season's end, we're going to be talking about this defense as playing. Really? They may not statistically be showing it, but I think they'll be playing at that time as, as well as anybody of the playoff teams. Well, if that's true, the teams in the AFC are in a world of hurt. Because if this defense gets to the kind of level you're talking about, and look, this isn't taking anything away from Kansas City, Cincinnati, perhaps New England over in the East, but if this team starts to play really good defense along with this offense, that's a scary scenario. There's no question. I mean, it's rare. Like I said, it's rare to have great offense and even good defense, but it's a much better defense than what their rankings would suggest. Into the hands of Demarius Thomas on his way to the end zone.
And another screen pass. They got Zane Beatles and Manny Ramirez. They, they lead the charge. The blocking on the outside. They got a touchdown with no Sean Marino on the screen. And now they come back with Demarius Thomas. Just an excellent job of execution. And this offense is as good or better. <laughs> better than advertised. Man. They <laughs> average 42. And they're a point after from 38. And still 6.35 to go. Things looking pretty good early on for RG3 and the Redskins, but been a tough go here in the second half. Game of the week here in Denver, Colorado. Broncos fell behind 21 to 7 in the opening minutes of this third quarter. And now those 336 points through eight games, the most in the history of the NFL by any team through eight games. They've held it each and every week. But they have to keep putting up anywhere from 35 to 45, depending on the week, to keep up that pace. First down for the Redskins when we come back, but let's check in back in Los Angeles, giving us a preview of Game 4 of the World Series. Here's Joel Klatt. That's right, Tom. Coming up after football, it is Game 4, live from St. Louis. The man at the middle of the controversy a night ago, Will Middlebrooks, and the Boston Red Sox look to tie it at two out to St. Louis after football. Tom, Troy, back to you. All right, Joel, thank you very much. Joel's been at a long time today. They get started <laughs> bright and early. Well, he... <laughs> Yeah, he has long weeks. He does right. that Thursday night game, too. Does a great job. OT presented by Lowe's coming up right at the end of this one. And then out to Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Catch made by Jordan Reed, and he's run out of bounds after a gain of 10. Now, with that catch there, Tom, the Redskins go, just now, just now go over 200 yards of offense for the game and this is an offense that came in fourth in the league averaging well over 400 yards a game so that kind of puts into perspective how good this defense has been for the broncos that's a straight drop by reed griffin only 118 passing yards well, they really had a good thing going early on with Alfred Morris. He has averaged five and a half yards per carry. But most of this second half, you wouldn't even know he's on the Redskins roster. No, we talked about it, that the Redskins have not completed one pass for 20 yards. And the Broncos came in defensively, giving up more of those than anybody in all of football. And that one's going to go for 14 to Jordan Reed. And now an injured Bronco on the field. Stopping the clock with 6.03. Mark Sohn there just leveling Chris Harris. An yeah. easy injured Bronco. Nice gesture here. The NFL Referees Association made a grant to the Estes Park School District here in Colorado to help repair athletic facilities devastated last month by all the severe flooding that affected northern Colorado. Jim Quirk, the NFLRA executive director, presented that check earlier today to the school district principal, Chuck Scott. That was an hour before the game, so all of us say thank you to the NFL Referees Association for that donation and their good work. Griffin hammered as he throws, and it's intercepted. That is another takeaway. That's that inside pressure that, that really has happened for a good part of this game on Robert Griffin right inside. This time it was Terrence Knighton. He's listed at 335 pounds, Tom. He's got to be at least 350. He's a big man. He comes right up the middle and meets Corey Ruckensteiger. He just drives Robert Griffin right into the ground. He's trying to get the ball out of his hands. Can't get anything on it. Trying to make a play, and it's intercepted. 
Raheem Moore on the interception. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 97 of the intercepting team. 15-yard penalty, first down, Denver. That's Malik Jackson. So you, Garcon a minute ago hitting Harris, which knocked him out of the game. Well, there have been more players that have been shaken up in this game, Troy, than any game I can remember in a long time. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I don't know how significant any of them are, but the number of players obviously being walked off the field, these trainers and this medical staff, they've earned their pay in this one. You know, perfectly legal hit by Terrence Knight, and he played it the way that you, you want him to do it. He's grabbing at his knee. You see, not the one that he had the surgery on last offseason. Well, the Redskins turn around, and they've got a they've got another tough opponent next week in San Diego. It's going to be a short week in trying to get ready for them, but they've got a lot to accomplish here in the next six days. Monte Ball for a couple of yards. It's going to be a, a lot of bags of ice on that plane ride home tonight for a whole lot of Redskins, especially Robert Griffin III. And hopefully he's okay and nothing wrong with his leg or his knee. As they're taking a look at it now over on that sideline. Scrimmage. Today's game produced by Richie Zions. Our director is Rich Russo. Not sure if they're looking at his ankle or his knee. But all those great pictures from Richie Zions, our producer, and our director, Rich Russo. Our associate directors, Jake Jolivet, Rich Gross. Broadcast Associates, Bentley Elliott. And Alex Olson, our technical producer, is Petey Chevalrous. We just call him Chevy. And our technical director, Colby Bourgeois. Audio mixer, Freddie Aldis. Fly to Phoenix, Arizona. Was that caught in bounds or was it intercepted? That is intercepted by D'Angelo Hall. Boy, here the Broncos with four minutes left to go, leading 38-21, and they're throwing a long ball. I thought Demarius Thomas had made the catch, and all of a sudden, D'Angelo Hall comes down with it. Look at this play that he makes. I mean, Demarius Thomas had it, and D'Angelo Hall just takes it right away from him. So much for the, so much for the left knee there. RG3 found out that it got intercepted, and now he's going to come back out, and or maybe not. Well, they told him no. You're staying right where you are. They're going to bring in the backup Kirk Cousins, who's not played all year long. Of course, he had that one spectacular start last year, replacing the injured Robert Griffin III against Cleveland when he threw for over 300 yards and a couple of touchdowns. He led him to another win. You may recall against Baltimore. Well, that, that run last year was outstanding by the Redskins, and... A lot of focus on RG3 and Alfred Morris. They wouldn't have had that run either, as you said, if it weren't for Kirk Cousins. Down down. Well, Troy, it's been a fun three-week run with you once again this season. It's always a blast for all of us. Our statistician, Tom Barbary. Our spotter, Scott Snyder to join up with you and your entire crew while Joe's away doing baseball. So as always, thanks for the hospitality and good luck the rest of the way. Yeah. We're going all the way to the Super Bowl here on Fox. Well, it's going to be fun back there in, in New York. Catch made by Reed across midfield. We'll stop the clock with 4.03 to go. Of course, in baseball terms, you come in, it's three and out for you, huh? Three games and... Exactly right. Off you go. That's exactly being Mariano, I think they call it, right? <laughs> Three outs and out. 
Well, I think for the Redskins, it's been a disappointing game, obviously, but the fact that Jordan Reed, you know, after we saw him get taken off the field, the fact that he's finishing this game on the field and playing, that's one of the few positives coming out of this one. Second down and 10. For the first two Denver possessions of the second half, a fumble, Redskins scored a touchdown. The interception return for a touchdown. Since then, three punts, three turnovers. Yeah, no, it was it was when they got down 14 points, it just got them even more focused. I mean, what was it, 31 unanswered points? You know, after the second turnover, it's impressive. 35 points here in the second half. That's a nice catch by Reed. He was about to take a big time hit. That's a first down to the 35. You know, you look inside this AFC West, and we talked a lot about the NFC East, and, you know, go flip a coin as to how all that's going to shake down. There's a legitimate chance that three teams out of the AFC West could be playing in the postseason. Obviously, Kansas City's unbeaten. You have Denver with just one loss. And the San Diego Chargers are a vastly improved team. They're one game over 500. You say, well, how are they going to get there? Well, you start taking a look around the rest of the AFC. Jets got annihilated today in Cincinnati to put them back at 400. Well, right, 500, and then and really nobody in the south and, and really nobody in the north will, will make you think they could separate from San Diego right now. Well, you look at it, I mean, a lot's going to, you know, shake itself out when Denver plays Kansas City. But how about if you're Denver and it's possible, I don't think it'll be the case, but it, it's possible Denver can go 14-2 and not have home field advantage. You know, I mean, it's pretty incredible. you got to... You know, I think Kansas City is, you know, they're undefeated and they're playing great, playing great defense. A lot of attention to this team right here. But those matchups are going to be a lot of fun to watch. And you see this schedule right here coming off the bye. Bye comes at a good time for Denver. But that's, that is a tough four-game stretch you know, right there. Three out of four on the road. Your only home games against Kansas City. Danny Trevathan shaking up. And let's check in for more on RG3 with uh, Pam Oliver. Yeah, Tom, Robert Griffin literally hopped off the table and tried to get away from the Redskins medical staff. Griffin has a left knee injury. His return is questionable. He's not in the game right now as a precaution. Well, that's good news. Hopefully everything's going to be okay with him wanting to come back into the game. Suffered the multiple ligament tears in his right knee during that playoff loss against the Seahawks last year, and many wondered would he be the same guy. Didn't play the entire preseason. They waited until the season opener, and without question, he looked rusty when the season began. But, you know, two of these last three weeks, starting to show signs again. And that is intercepted. Dominique Rogers Cromarty to the end zone. just cluing Kirk Cousins the entire way and he drives on it. He's got great speed. I mean, even right here, he's just playing with Kirk Cousins. It looked like Kirk Cousins is gaining some ground on him to try to keep him from scoring, but there's no way you're going to catch DRC. He's got unbelievable speed and John Elway clearly liking what he's seeing here this afternoon. You know, so here they're held to seven points. In the first half, Tom, they come into this game averaging 42, and <laughs> they surpass their season average. So 45 to 21. Well, Troy, let's bounce around the NFC a little bit. We've talked about the NFC East. We started to talk a little bit about the NFC North, where... Uh, the Lions go to five and three. Packers are at four and two. 
The South, New Orleans, obviously off to a great start. Only the one loss. We were there, that miracle finish in New England. And then everybody talks about the 49ers and the Seahawks. Anybody for you that is clearly better than the rest of the pack? Well, I, I like Seattle. I mean, I like what I've seen from them. I, I like New Orleans, too. I mean, we've had a chance to, to have some of their games. And, and I like, of course, offensively. But you, you like some of the things they're also doing defensively. But Seattle, you know, they, they are just a very tough team. And defensively, the way that they just physically beat people up is pretty impressive. But I don't. I think San Francisco, you know, of course, in the same division, there's still a lot of football left to be played and a lot of teams that, that could emerge. But... Uh, uh, those are the ones that, that I think the most of, and I, and I think Green Bay as well. I mean, even though you, you talk about Detroit, uh, I like what I've seen of Green Bay over the years, even with a number of injuries, that they've been able to emerge out of that division and do a little damage in the playoffs. So a lot of injuries, yes. Can they overcome them? I don't know, but they have in years past. We still have 2.07 to go. We have baseball coming up, and for more on that, let's check in once more in L.A. with Joel Klatt. All right, thank you, Tom, and we will take you out to Boston, or excuse me, St. Louis, for a game for the World Series. After the OT, which is, of course, right here in L.A., Shane Victorino, a late scratch from the Boston lineup. So out to St. Louis after the OT. Back to you, Tom. All right, thank you very much, Joel. There you go. Look at Pat Bolden, this celebrating his 30th season as owner of the Denver Broncos. He bought the team back in March of 1984. And this Broncos franchise, since he bought the team, only the 49ers have won more games. Broncos with the fourth most divisional titles. Been to five Super Bowls under his ownership. Cousins taking a big hit as we've reached a two-minute warning. Well, there is no penalty on that last play where Cousins threw the football, but you can mark it down. There will be a fine handed out sometime during the week. The ball is intercepted by Sean Phillips, former Pro Bowl linebacker in the 3-4 with San Diego, having an excellent year with Denver. Rolling the dice there. hit a moment ago there was no penalty this is Wesley Woodyard and I mean that is leading with a helmet right into the chin of Cousins that's about as blatant as it gets Tom and they got a referee standing right there that's his job he, he, you don't miss those there's no excuse for missing it but here's the interception off the deflection by Sean Phillips but it's amazing that that Kirk Cousins was even able to get back up after that that's a big time blow you know right to the headgear right in the face and they missed the call Un unexcusable well for many of you just joining us having watched the Arizona win over Atlanta you look at the score at the top of your screen you see 45 to 21 you're thinking oh hum another Denver game and in the last 20 minutes of play you'd be right <laughs> but Mike Shanahan and his return to Denver in the first minute of the second half they scored 14 points to go ahead by two touchdowns. And ever since, it has been all Denver. Well, and as crazy as this sounds, I mean, unless you were watching the game, I, hey, I thought Jim Haslett and his defense did a pretty good job. You know I mean? They held up with, with, with a, a short deck. You know I mean? They had some young players, and they hung in there, and the offense in that second half just did not help them at all. And... You're not going to hold up long if that's the case. And you know, another good win for the Denver Broncos and John Fox. OT presented by Lowe's coming up next in game four of the World Series from St. Louis. The Redskins last six possessions. A fumble, a three and out, a 15-yard punt, and four interceptions. And that will tie a ribbon around this one. So the Denver Broncos go to 7-1. and one. Mike Shanahan. Returning to a place he worked for 21 years, 14 as a head coach. 45-21. Broncos win it. More to come from here at Mile High in a moment.